the, the knees on the floor with a cushion or a block between the, the buttocks and the heels just to feel comfortable. Make sure you're comfortable. And growing the spine long and tall. And today we're taking a mudra with the fingers called courage mudra. This is for trust and it helps anxiety go away. So related, deeply related within the muladhara chakra is where fear resides. So that's something I'll touch on through class. And this mudra comes from Japan. Yes, Junko, this is one for you. And it's always good to help cope with feelings, niggling worries of anxiety, fear, and helps you be feeling more courageous. So this is a great technique. So how do we do this one? So we take our left hand, fingers together, and then take your right hand and grab hold of your pointer finger of the left hand, okay? And the thumb sitting on top, uh, the top of the uh, left hand, and your four fingers wrapping around that left hand pointer finger. So holding your hands on your laps and closing the eyes and growing the spine long and tall. Becoming present, arriving on your mat in body, mind and spirit. Drawing attention to your breath, coming in and out, gently flowing. Don't force it, just allow it to flow. Being aware of your breath. Being aware of your body, seated. Feel your seat connect to the earth, the sit bones, the buttocks, the shins if you are kneeling. Feel your spine lengthen long and tall, but feeling grounded. So feel as though the crown of the head is reaching up to the sky, but you are definitely rooted to the earth, feeling grounded. So Muladhara, the root chakra, the first base energy chakra center near the, the pelvis area, just by the pubic bone, also in the region of the coccyx, the low, lower base of the spine. That's the vortex energy center. And that travels down the legs. The energy traveling down to the legs, to the earth, grounding us. So if it's out of, out of balance, you can feel uprooted, unstable, insecure, maybe detached, unconnected maybe even anxious or fearful. So the very antithesis of this, the opposite, is when you feel present, when you feel connected to all things and you feel stabilized. So today we're going to really focus on those areas, feeling and becoming more grounded for stability. Before we start our actual practice, we're going to start in Tadasana today. I'd like us to all join together in an affirmation. I am here. So getting ourselves grounded. I focus on the present moment, the here and now. I bring my attention to my body, to the sensations I feel and the environment around me. I am here. I am here now, grounded. I am safe. I am at peace. So this is an affirmation of feeling grounded and connected. So let's just focus a little bit more on the breath. Becoming aware of the sound of your breath. So making some ujjayi sound to your breath. So that swirling of the energy of the breath in the back of the throat. It's like you're fogging up a mirror going, ah, but with the lips closed. So in and out through the nose and then swirling the breath in the back of the throat. Ujjayi, victorious, oceanic sounding breath. 
And also for this practice, really focus on your Mula Bandha, that area around the pelvic floor, the muscles there, the perineum, squeezing and drawing the energy in. So begin to engage your Mula Bandha now. This Bandha, this energy helps to ground us in this present moment in our bodies and help us work on our root chakra. Taking some nice steady, long, deep breaths in and out. Begin to lengthen and extend the breath in and out. Make it a little bit longer and deeper. Working on drawing in the energy, squeezing in the energy. You can even draw in your lower abdominals on your exhale to squeeze a little further into your Mula Bandha area. So on your next breath out, really draw in your lower belly as well as squeeze, lifting into the pelvic floor. So it's imagining like you're drawing in a string around your your root there, pulling and drawing the energy up towards your heart. I am here. I am grounded. I am at peace. I am safe. These are wonderful affirmations to make you feel more in this present moment. Slowly opening up your eyes, releasing your hands, give your fingers a little shake out. And let's take ourselves slowly onto all fours, onto our knees. We're gonna make our way up to standing and starting our practice in standing. So no rush, just coming over onto the knees, tucking the toes, beginning to draw the hips up, extend the legs, give them a little pedal out, walk your dog a little bit first before we come up to standing. A little wagging of your tail side to side. And then walking the feet forwards. Let's take a little rag doll just to sway from side to side. Nod your head yes, shake it no. <clears throat> just releasing any tension in the neck. And release tension from your face. Taking the sways from side to side, you can touch the earth with your fingertips. And begin to also feel your feet your feet connected with your mat, your feet connected with the earth. This is Pada Bandha, so your feet Bandha. Also drawing in, in the pelvic floor area, your Mula Bandha. Start to pull yourself up to standing by stacking the spine super low, allow the arms to just hang heavy. And allowing the head to arrive last. and bringing your feet together either hip distance apart or your big toes touching with a little space between the heels. Feel your feet firmly rooted into the earth. Lift your toes, spread the toes wide and then replace them down into your mat and connect your feet to the floor. This is your Pada Bandha, feeling the energy there rooted into the earth, feeling the neutrality of your pelvis, the engagement of the legs. So imagine the energy <clears throat> flowing up and down between the feet and the pelvis, up and down the legs. So the energy lifting and circulating then through the body up to the crown of the head but we particularly want to focus on the energy of the feet through the legs to the pelvic area drawing your shoulders back and down 
engage your energy to your fingertips, spreading the palms forwards, receiving universal cosmic energy. Lifting the crown of the head up to the sky, so growing your spine long and tall, drawing in that Mula Bandha and feeling the rootedness of Pada Bandha, feet connected to the earth. Close your eyes just for a few moments and be aware of the balance of your body, maybe taking a little sway from side to side. Forwards and backwards, maybe rocking your weight forwards and backwards, slightly into the toes, then into the heels of the feet. Play with your balance just for a few more breaths and then come back to a neutral position, balancing the weight equally between your feet, your feet rooted to the earth, Pada Bandha, keeping Mula Bandha switched on. Draw your chin slightly towards your chest. Feel the length in the back of the neck and the crown of the head reaching to the sky. Strong, rooted, grounded, Tadasana, mountain pose. Ujjayi breath, flowing, strong, strong, positive energy, white light, energy, prana, life force entering in and out through the nose, releasing any energy that does not serve you on the breath out. So thinking of positive energy in, negative energy out. Now opening up the eyes, we're going to take Vrikshasana. Tree pose, starting with the, le the left leg lifted, so the right foot really focusing on rooting that big toe into the earth. Find a spot on the floor for your drishti, your gaze, your focus for your eyes. Slowly bringing your left knee up towards your chest. Move slowly, move with awareness. If you can, take your nose down to your knee. Maybe give your knee a little kiss, hello. So feeling the strength, the stability in your standing leg. Taking your foot to touch the earth or your inner calf or the inner thigh, but not on the knee. Taking your hands to your heart center. Feel the flow of your breath in and out, nice and steady, supporting you in your posture, in your asana, reaching your arms to the sky. Keep your focus on that spot on the floor, grounding your feet, Pada Bandha, Ujjayi breath. If you feel wobbly, that's okay. Just pick up where you left off if you need to stop. Or lower the foot, big toes to touch the earth. Remember there's no ego here, no competition. It's all practice. And every day we change. Our needs change. Our focus changes. Big breath in. Exhaling, hand to heart center and extending the left foot forward, squeeze into that left thigh. And then lowering the left foot down back to the earth with control. Shake the legs out and move over to the left side. So grounding the left toe, big toe into the earth, the foot into the earth, your padabandha, find your drishti spot for your gaze. Drawing your right knee in towards your chest. Moving slowly and consciously to either kiss or touch the knee with the nose. Finding your landing place for your foot, earth, shin, calf, inner thigh. Your choice, your practice. Flow with your breath, your energy. Feel the energy rise up from the feet up to the pelvis, stable trunk. And when you're ready, lifting the arms skyward, grow your branches up to the sky.
Keep drawing in Mula Bandha, the lower abdominals. Three more deep breaths. Drawing your hands back down to your heart center and extending the right foot forward, squeeze into that thigh. And then lowering the leg down with control back down to the earth. Taking a big step back with your left foot. Going to set ourselves up into Virabhadrasana 2. So today's a little bit different to our usual sequence. There's not so many sun salutations in this practice today. I want to root our feet into the ground, taking your right foot to line up with the left inner arch, sink the hips down. So move slowly and with awareness. We're still warming up. Reaching the arms to the sky, then reaching the arms out to the far left and right look to your right hand and sinking down soften into the shoulders into the face no tension there maybe a little smile on the corner of the lips checking your front knee is not extending beyond the ankle if it is then take your feet a little wider and sink down lower Gonna stay here for another five deep breaths. Feel your feet rooted into the earth. Feel that connection there. And now taking Uttita Parshvakanasana, forearm to thigh, taking your arm diagonal alongside your left ear. And imagine you're holding something precious in your right hand. Sink a little deeper into the hips, into the pelvis, rooting down. Lift your gaze up to your top hand. Keep the chest open forwards. So rolling the left shoulder back. Feel the energy in that right hand. If you feel ready, you can take your right hand down to your right ankle. Sink a little lower into the hips. Three more deep breaths here. So we're drawing a diagonal line with left side of the body, reaching the left fingertips as far away from the outer blade of the left foot as you can. And then windmill your left arm down super slowly with control back to warrior two. And pivot your feet. So now you're facing left foot forwards, right foot behind, sinking down, Virabhadrasana two. Check your feet if you need to make any adjustments. The foundation of this posture is the feet sinking the hips down, sending your gaze to your left hand. Soften into the face. Feel your ujjayi breath flowing in and out. Let's hold it here for a little longer. Sink a little deeper. Feel the feet grounded, rooted, strong. A little deeper. And then your side angle. Forearm to thigh, holding that precious golden ball of energy in your left hand. Windmill the arm alongside the right ear. Roll the right shoulder back, chest faces forwards. Look up to your top hand. Squeeze the thighs towards each other. Reaching the left, the right fingertips, sorry, as far away from the right outer blade of the foot as possible. It's like you're trying to stretch and stretch and reach and extend. Heart lifts up to the sky, gaze lifts up to your hand. If you have the space to sink a little deeper into the hips, take your left hand down to the ankle. Keep flowing with your breath. Three more deep breaths, hold it here. And then windmilling that right arm down and round to bring yourself back up 
look to the front of the mat, pivot on your right foot, and then take a nice big positive step forwards, bringing the feet together. Hands on the hips and re-step your left foot back. Realign the feet centrally and reach the arms out to the side. Now this time, maybe you don't have the feet quite so far apart as we're coming into Trikonasana. Can extend and reach. So somebody's pulling on your right fingertips. Pull, pull, pull. And jut your left, your hips out to the left. Then place your right hand down somewhere to land. If you need to take a block, to press into a block. We can take it down to hover alongside the calf. Take your left hand on your left hip and roll the left shoulder back. So the chest is forwards, facing forwards, and tucking the bottom in and under. So if you were against the wall, you'd be pl planting your back and your legs against the wall, like you're between two planes of glass. Now extend your left arm up to the sky. Look up to your top hand, and no dumping down into that right hand. Take your right hand now to your heart center. Squeeze your thighs towards each other like you're pulling the energy together. So really strong engagement of the legs. Pulling in those lower bandhas. Draw navel to spine, a bit of Uddiyana Bandha as well. Feeling the feet glued and rooted to the earth. One more big breath in, hand to heart center. And now taking ourselves into Ardha Chandrasana. So taking your hand either to the floor or down to a block. We're gonna stay here for one minute. So set it up well. We're gonna lift our left leg. Step back a little bit. Our left leg lifts with our right hand on the block or your right hand fingertips to touch the earth. So you choose. So that block is ahead of you, slightly diagonal to the right foot. Then lifting the left arm up to the sky. So your arms are 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Flex into your lifted foot, squeezing into the standing leg thigh. Rooting the foot, padabandha, very, very strong into this posture. So weight is all landing pretty much into the foot. It's not pushing so hard into the block. Just a light touch there. So making sure that you're using the strength of the leg and the an upward lift almost of your left hand up to the sky. So it's a very light touch on that block. Hold it here for another five breaths. Look up to your top hand if you can. And then stepping out with your left foot. Taking your feet nice and wide, facing forwards, hands to hips. Roll the shoulders back and down, open up on a breath in. Lift and lengthen, and then hinging from the hip creases, starting to fold forwards. Prasarita Padottanasana. Take your hands, lining up with the inner arches of the feet. Squeeze the elbows in towards each other. Big breath in, and then exhale, drawing the, the head down towards the floor. Adjust into the feet if you feel you can widen the feet further to draw the crown of the head down to the floor. Take five deep breaths here, and then we're going to move on to moving the arms. Focus on the foundation of your feet into the earth. But lifting the tailbone up to the sky, squeeze and lift into your bula bandha. Two more breaths. And then taking the hands behind the back, clasp them together. Lift the arms to the sky. You can take your weight a little bit more into the toes if your head is touching the floor. Three more deep breaths. And then release the hands down to reach towards the big toes. Peace fingers around the big toes. Elbows lift to the sky. Squeeze and lift into your mula bandha. Three more breaths.
and then reaching the arms forwards onto spider fingers. Allow the head to drop between the arms. Three more breaths. Then a big breath in. Walk your hands back. Heel toe the feet a little bit closer together. And then pivoting around. We're going to step your feet together. Step the feet together. And we're going to take our trikonasana on the other side. So a nice big step back with the right foot. I'm going to turn around so I can face the other way. Have your block ready for your left hand for when we do our half moon. So setting your feet up centrally, arms reach out, reach away with the left fingers as far as you can, jutting the right hip out, and then down we go. Find your place for your hand. So we're trying to really reach the chest forward, tucking the bottom in and under, we're not jutting the bottom behind us. So tuck the pelvis under, and then 12 o'clock, six o'clock, your arms. Don't dump down into that left hand. If you need to place it onto your block, then do so. But if possible, bring your hand to your heart center. Feel the lift of your right arm, your right hand up to the sky. So it's a lifting and extending, not a dumping down. We could always do this, but it's really not engaging. So lift the arm up, chest forwards, roll that right shoulder back, hand to heart center. Let's hold it here for another three deep breaths. Feet rooted, legs pulling in together, strong squeeze into the hips and glutes, strong posture here for the legs, you might feel a little quivering and shaking, that's your energy. Big breath in, look down to your left foot, a little bend in the knee, start to reach your hand down to the floor, onto that block, so weighted into the left leg, rising up with the right leg, hip height. So setting this up carefully, standing leg strong, reaching the right arm up to the sky. So not too much weight in this left hand on the block or onto the floor. We want to dump down too much. We want to feel a sense of lifting of that right arm up to the sky. If you're feeling wobbly today, that's okay. Look down to the floor if you're finding it hard to look up towards your hand. One more big breath in and out. A little bend in your standing leg, then lowering the right leg down. Pivot round to the front of your mat and step your feet together. We're going to next come into a very strong kneading, squeezing energy into the thighs, which is eagle pose, Garudasana. Starting with the right leg, standing leg, root the right foot into the earth, big toe, really, really strong. Couple of options, either taking the figure of four with the left foot across the thigh or just above the knee and sinking the hips down. Find that spot on the floor for your drishti. So you can take it like this, or we're going to wrap the left leg around and above, behind the right, and then taking the right. So your left arm does the opposite bind. So left arm under, left leg over. Squeeze very strongly into your abdominal area, into the glutes, hips, thighs, legs. So it's a really, really strong focus from the hips down to the feet. Really, really good for our first root chakra. Finding the spot on the floor, lifting the arms to the sky. Five more breaths. And then slowly unbinding the legs and the arms give your legs a shake out over to the other side so rootedness of the foot now this might be your weaker side so be kind to yourself if you need to do the figure of four then do the figure of four like this or taking the right leg over the top 
and the right arm underneath the left. Bind the hands together, squeeze the thighs together, really push into the big toe of the standing leg. Don't worry if you wobble. It's perfectly normal and natural to wobble. And taking a few more deep breaths. I find this side a lot harder because it's my left foot. Two more breaths. And then slowly unbind the legs, give them a shake out. Big step back with your left foot. Now into pyramid pose. Our hips are facing the top of the mat this time little 45 degree angle on that left foot but our feet are not lined up centrally they're hip distance apart so like this take your hands to your hips to make sure your hips are shining forwards to the top of the mat choices for the arms opposite two opposite binds behind you clasping opposite elbows or clasping the hands together in a reverse prayer. So pushing the hands together like this, or clasp the elbows. Your choice. Taking a lovely breath in as you lift the heart, gaze, chest, lengthening the spine, then exhale, squeezing into the thighs, hinging from the hip creases, folding over your right leg. Send your gaze down to your big toe, roll the shoulders back and down, push the hands together or squeeze into the elbows, keep the elbows lifted. Send your left hip forwards and your right hip back. Then taking a lovely deep breath in, come halfway up, release your hands or elbows. We're gonna come into um, Paravrita Trikonasana. So take your block either on the outside of your foot or your hand down to the floor. Take your right hand onto your hip, Squeeze the thighs together, scoop the belly up, engage into your mula bandha and roll that right shoulder back. Lifting the chest, opening the chest to the right and then when you're ready, lifting the right arm up to the sky. Squeeze the thighs together. This is a strong balance in the legs. Also into the, into the, core, the core strength, but particularly into the legs. Push into your feet, root your feet into the earth. Two more breaths. Ujjayi breath. Look down to your front foot. Coming into a little revolved half moon. So have your block to the floor for your hand or your hand to the floor completely. Your choice. So you can use your block for support. We're going to be keep reaching the right arm to the sky as we lift the left leg up hip height. Flex the lifted foot, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Three more breaths. And then lowering the foot down. Move your block, place your hands down, and let's do a little vinyasa. So gonna jump the feet back, take Chaturanga Dandasana on knees, chest, chin. Open the chest up, lift into your upward facing dog or a salambhasana with the legs down, and then through Bidalasana, tabletop, transitioning into downward facing dog. Take five breaths in down dog and pedal the legs out, give them a little stretch. And now taking a lovely step forwards with your left foot, ground the right foot down, 45 degree angle, we're setting ourselves up for our tri um, triangle pyramid pose with the left foot forwards and the right foot back. Hips face forwards, so your legs are forming that triangle shape, but not too wide that way, and hip distance apart, pointing forwards to the top of the mat. So check your hips are facing forwards first. Take your bind of your hands, reverse prayer, or clasping opposite elbows. Inhale, lift and lengthen into the chest, and exhale, squeeze into the thighs, folding down forwards over your left leg, drishti to your big toe, or down to the shin, 
drive your right hip forwards and your left hip back and squeeze the legs towards each other like you're pulling them together. Squeeze and lift the belly. With every exhale, softening down that little bit more to the front leg. Roll the shoulders away from the ears. Soften into the face. Then inhale to come halfway up. Release the binds of the hands. Taking your hand, your right hand onto the block on the outside of the left foot. Or taking the hand down to the floor, your choice. Left hand onto the left hip. Roll the left hip. Shoulder back. Squeeze the thighs towards each other and then lifting the left arm up to the sky when you're ready you can look up to your top hand if you have your balance today squeeze and lift into the belly squeeze the thighs a bit more towards each other squeeze into the glutes really engaging strongly into the legs strong into your lower bandas feet rooted let's take another two deep breaths and then revolving half moon. So right hand onto the block or right hand down to the floor. Your choice. Lifting up the right leg hip right. And lifting the left arm up to the sky. Squeeze into the standing leg. Pushing into the, the big toe. So that big toe mound pushing into the floor. Flex the foot of the lifted leg. Three more breaths. Use your ajay sound, energize your breath, energize your body. Big breath in, bring your feet together and slowly peel yourself back up to standing into mountain pose. Feel the feet rooted into the earth. Neutralize into the pelvis, roll the shoulders back and down. Feel the energy as it's lifting from your feet through the legs, up to your lower bandas, and into your first chakra, your root chakra, Muladhara. Let's take one sun salutation. Inhale, sweeping the arms wide, lift your arms and heart up to the sky. Look up, exhale, swan dive down over the legs. Root the hands down to the earth, drop the head to shins. Then inhale, lift the heart gaze and fingertips on the earth. Look forwards, hold the breath, plant the hands and hop, step or jump into a strong plank. Exhale through Chaturanga, Dandasana on knees, chest, chin. Inhale, up dog, lift your heart gaze, roll the shoulders back and down. Navel to spine, downward facing dog. Five breaths here. Draw your chin towards your chest and send your gaze towards your navel. Lift the low belly up to your spine and squeeze into Mula Bandha, your pelvic floor lifted. Feel your feet and hands strongly rooted into your mat, into the ground. And your Ujjayi breath flowing. Steady, constant, fresh new energy in and out. Soften into your shoulders, so t- taking the tension out of the shoulders and neck and face. On your next breath in, lift up onto the balls of your feet so the heels are lifted. Take your thighs in towards your belly. Look to the top of the mat between your hands. Hop, step, or jump up lightly. Breath in, half lift. Forward folding deeply, exhale. Plant the hands. Take the feet into the floor as you lift yourself up slowly, slowly up to Earth for Hastas in a little micro back bend. And then hands to heart center. And now we're going to stand in Ashja Chandrasana, lifting the left leg, step it back with control, bending into your right leg and then lifting the arms up to the sky. You can draw your hands together, peaceful yogi gun. Or have the arms shoulder width apart and imagine you're holding a sphere of energy, glowing white energy, cosmic energy between your hands, whatever you prefer. 
squeeze into that left thigh. So straightening into that leg and you're driving the heel away. Behind you, push into the standing toe, put the front foot and squeeze into the thighs. Two more deep breaths in and out. Into warrior three. So set, taking your weight forwards into the right leg, we're gonna reach the arms forwards, lifting the left leg parallel with the floor, level with the hips, or as high as you can go, but no higher than hip height. Reaching forwards with the arms, energize into the arms all the way to the fingertips, hold that ball of energy there. And then stepping the, the left foot down, we're going to take a revolved Parsvottanasana. So coming round back to being on the ball of the back foot, take your hands to your heart centre and then taking your left elbow across your right knee, roll the right shoulder back and taking your hands to line up with your heart centre. Squeeze into the thigh of the left leg. If you feel uncomfortable like this, you can drop the left knee down and revolve with the knee drop down. Look over your right shoulder. Three more breaths. Big breath in, planting the hands down, frame the front foot, push into the hands as you come into plank. Let's vinyasa round to the other side. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, hips drive back into one breath, down dog. And then stepping your left foot forwards, keep the right heel lifted off the floor, taking Ashtachandrasana, left leg forwards, right leg back. So now we're on the other side. Straighten as much as you can into the back leg. So really squeeze and lift into that thigh energy between the hands or drawing the hands together if that feels more comfortable for you. Really squeeze into the pelvic area, into the hips, into the glutes. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Strong energy. Two more breaths. And then into Virabhadrasana three. Looking forward to reach the arms forward as you bring your weight into your left leg and then lifting, step back a bit, lifting the right leg up to the hip height level, parallel to the floor. So your gaze is down towards the floor a few feet ahead of you. Long neck. And then dropping down the right foot down. Keep on the ball of that back leg foot, hands to heart center. Gonna twist over to the left. So right elbow across, outer edge of the left knee. And this is where the hands come to heart center as you revolve your chest around. So you're looking over your left shoulder, squeeze and lift into that right thigh. Three more deep breaths. If you need to drop the right knee down, drop the right knee down. There's no competition, no ego. Another breath in and out. And then looking down to your front foot, unbind the elbow off the knee. Taking your hands to the floor, step yourself into plank and then drop the knees down. Taking Balasana, child's pose. Closing the eyes, roll the shoulders forwards, palms open to the, to the heavens. Checking in with your breath here. Another three deep breaths in and out. On an inhale, coming up, reach your hands forwards and lower yourself down, slowly and carefully down to your mat. So lying down on our bellies, 
take your legs hip distance apart. We're gonna reach back for our ankles. Now, if you need to do this with a strap, taking a strap around the feet. Flex the feet so that you're really clasping on tight onto the front of the ankle, squeeze into the thighs and keep the feet and legs parallel with each other. On a deep breath in, gonna start to push the feet into the hands. It's energetically pushing the feet into the hands, starting to lift the thighs off the mat and lifting the chest, lifting the gaze forwards. Deep breaths in and out, five of those. It's always a challenge to breathe in Dhanurasana, into bow, because we're lying on our bellies. <laughs> Lots of weight pushing into your diaphragm. So expect to feel a, a little strange in breathing heavily here. And then releasing down. Exhale. Make a little pillow for your head. Take a couple of breaths. I'm going to do that one more time. So setting that up again, clasping the ankles, really get a good firm grip of the feet, flex the feet, roll the shoulders back and down, squeeze the shoulder blades together, but then lifting the thighs off, lifting the chest. So really pushing the feet into the hands and releasing down. Push your hands into the mat by the chest, take the hips back. We're going to take a little camel now, Ustrasana. So you can flex the feet for this if it's easier to reach for the heels, or you can even take some blocks alongside the feet to push the hands into, if that works a little better for you. So first of all, take your hands to the lower back, push the heels of the hands into the lower back, and driving the hips forwards. So we're aiming at opening up the front of the body, so you're trying to lift your chest and heart up to the sky whilst driving the hips and thighs forwards. One more deep breath in and out and slowly coming back up. Do that one more time with the hands into the lower back if it feels more comfortable. Take the hands down to the blocks or your hands down to your heels but only reach for the heels if that's possible for you and comfortable. So this shouldn't cause you any pain. If it does, stop and take a, a slightly less intense version with the hands on the hips. Rolling and squeezing the shoulder blades together, push the hips forwards, open the chest. If you look up to the sky, if it feels comfortable, five deep breaths. Take your hands to your hips very slowly. If you're looking up or back, bring your head up nice and slowly. Sinking yourself back down to the floor now. And take a little Adha Matsyandrasana. So dropping your hips to the right, bring your left foot across the right thigh. I'm gonna revolve round to the left. You can take your left hand behind your back, reach for the right hip or thigh. So your palm of your hands facing forwards, touching the earth with the fingertips, looking over your left shoulder. So you feel as though you're reaching the crown of the head up to the sky, nice long spine, drishti to the far left. Really squeezing and drawing in navel to spine. And then over to the other side, taking a little twist the other way. So folding the left foot under, right foot across left thigh, reaching the left hand across the right thigh. So opening the chest to the right. And take your right hand to touch the floor if you need to, or wrap it behind the back if you feel stable. Drishti to the far right, beyond your shoulder. Squeeze into the abdominal area, really squeeze in there. And with every exhale, feel as though you're rotating a little bit further around. Two more breaths. 
and release. Reaching your feet forwards, flex the feet. Lift and lengthen. Then reaching forwards, folding forwards. Really extend your fingertips beyond the feet as though somebody's pulling you by your fingertips. You can clasp hold of the outer edges of your feet or take the piece fingers around the big toes. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, deeply forward fold. Pashimottanasana. So the belly landing on the thighs first. So the idea isn't that we're trying to create a C shape with the spine. Keeping the spine long and then folding down over the legs. So drishti to the big toes or down to the shins. Pushing the legs into the mat, if you can. So squeezing into the thighs to release into the hamstrings. Let's hold it here for another deep, five deep breaths. With every exhale, feel the tension in the legs easing off maybe a little bit and allowing you to fold a little deeper down onto the front, the front of the legs. On a breath in, lifting up. And then folding down onto the mat, roll yourself down onto your backs. Taking a little knees to chest. So hugging your knees to your chest. Little rock side to side. Extend your left leg now, keep your right knee hugged in tight. And then keeping your left hand on the outside of the right knee. I'm going to drop the right knee down over to the left towards the floor. It doesn't have to touch. Keep your right arm extended out to the side, gluing the shoulder and arm to the floor. And then look to your right hand. So taking a spinal twist here. Two more breaths. Keep that right knee as high as you can. And if you want to, you can even extend the right leg. And release, come back to neutral center. Extend the right leg and now hug the left knee in with the right hand across the left knee and the left arm extended with the palm facing up. Let's start to drop that knee down towards the right. And look to your left hand. So the left arm and shoulder, glue that down to the floor. Don't let it lift. So the aim is not to necessarily take the knee down to the floor. It's more gluing the spine, the shoulders to the floor so that upper part stays going that way. So we don't want to start going like this because then you're losing the twist. If you want to extend the left leg, straighten out the leg to the side, holding onto the foot. If you have that flexibility, then do so. Three more deep breaths. Bend your knee if you've extended it and come back to center. Taking the outer blades of the feet, so grabbing hold of the feet, pulling the feet down towards you as though you're trying to draw your knees down to the mat. Take a little happy baby, a little rock from side to side, a little joyous rock from side to side. Embrace your inner child. Engage with that happy baby within you. Carefree nature. And back to neutral. And if it feels good, really hug the knees in tight, give them a squeeze, wrap the arms around your shins. And take a little rock and roll forwards and backwards. Giving your spine a little massage. One more of those. And then reaching the legs up to the sky. Take the arms out to the side and then bring them down alongside your body. Roll the shoulders back and into the floor, arms engage into the floor, palms the hands down into the mat. So feel a strong connection with the arms and shoulders and hands into the floor. Flex your feet very actively towards you. 
Squeeze into your thighs, very, very active legs. You may feel a little quiver and a shake and a tremor in the legs, that's good. And engaging it with your breath, follow your breath. 10 more breaths like this. Keep pushing that energy into the floor with the arms and the hands. Draw your navel to your spine. Scoop the lower abdominals in. This is a surprisingly strong pose. Viparita Karani. Three more breaths. And then slowly bending into the knees, drop the feet down. Window wiper, the legs side to side, widen the arms, palms facing up. And then extend the legs. Extend the legs away. Take the arms away from the body. Take the palms of the hands facing up to the sky. Roll your head gently from side to side. I'm going to do a couple of squeeze and releases. So I'd like you to make fists with the hands, squeeze into the hands, lift the arms and then squeeze into the legs if you can. Scrunch up the face, hug the elbows in towards you and scrunch the shoulders up to the ears. Big breath in, through the nose, sigh it out. Do that one more time. So tense, tense, tense everything. Big breath in. Scrunch up the face, squeeze it, squeeze it tight, close the eyes. <sighs> Exhale, release it out. A little roll of the head side to side. And settling down. If you need to pop a blanket over you, or pop some socks on, or a jumper, make yourself comfortable. I'm going to spend a few minutes here. in Shavasana. So get rid of any wiggles, jiggles that you need to. Closing the eyes and soften the muscles of the face. So smoothing out the brow, relax the cheek, the lips, the jaw, tongue resting heavy in the roof of the mouth, eyes heavy in their sockets, resting gently. Imagine the scalp relaxed, all tension in the head easing. Any tension and tightness in the neck softening there. Taking your attention to your shoulders, your arms, elbows, all the way down the forearms to the wrists, to the hands, relaxing and softening into the arms completely, allowing the arms to sink and melt into the mat, relaxing into your shoulders, the upper back, the lower back, softening into the chest, the belly, allowing the abdomen to soften and relax. Feeling the natural rise and fall of the abdomen as you breathe in and out. Softening into the hips and the buttocks, the pelvis, the groin. Allowing the body to sink into the floor, into the mat, fully supported. Soften the muscles of the thighs, the hamstrings. Softening into the knees, the shins and calves, the ankles, the heels, soles, upper feet and toes. Feet completely relaxed. Scanning through your body from the head down to the feet, down to the fingertips. 
if you see or feel any sensations, then accept the sensations that are there. Circling your breath around your whole body, circling your energy to every part of your body, smoothing and soothing any tension away, just let it dissolve and feel as though your energy, your breath is flowing fluidly around your body like water. And now circling your attention to the L area of your pelvis, your root chakra, Mula Dara. So picture the color red, a deep, rich, ruby red. And imagine this color as a spinning wheel of energy in your pelvic area. Imagine holding that ball of energy, red energy color in this area. Drawing your lower abdominals in on an exhale. And then feel as though that red energy is glowing, glowing brightly. Focusing on this present moment and releasing and letting go of any fear, any insecurity, any anxiety, any feelings of lack or a lack of spark. As you feel this red, glowing, soothing energy support you, knowing that you are not alone. Fear is one of our greatest teachers. So we don't ignore our fear, but we embrace it and turn it into positivity. So releasing the mind from any negative false mental energy that we may hear ourselves speaking to ourselves over and over. So instead transforming that energy, that maybe negative energy into positivity and circulating instead a negative loop that you may be stuck in to a healthy, glowing, vibrant, positive energy. Switching over from any chemical imbalance and mental turmoil into peace, love and gratitude. And lastly today I'm going to read from my book for the 1st of February, Transcend Your Limitations. You're free now, free to take the journey of a lifetime, free to experience life in its newness, its freshness, its magic in a way you never have before. The only limitations on you are the ones you've placed on yourself. Your prison has been of your own making. Don't blame or chastise yourself. Life has created certain challenges for you, but challenge is good, challenges change us. But the purpose hasn't been to imprison you. The purpose is to set you free to provide you with lessons, experiences, circumstances that would trigger growth and healing. Life has been provoking, promoting, urging you to grow, stretch, learn, heal. Life has been trying to break you out of your prison. So set yourself free. Let yourself go on a journey of love. Take notes, be present, experience, learn, love and laugh and cry when you need to. Best when you're tired, rest when you're tired. Take a flashlight to help you see in the dark. But most of all, take yourself and go. Go on your journey of joy. 
Filling your lungs, take a lovely deep breath in through your nose. And then open your mouth and sigh your breath out. Do a few more of those, deep breath in and then sigh the breath out. And then when you're ready, wiggling your fingers and toes and give yourself a lovely, loving stretch. Reaching your arms above your head, bring your legs together, stretch yourself out. Keeping your eyes closed, rolling gently over onto your right side before coming back up to seated. And taking yourself onto your knees, onto your heels if you feel. That Varasana is how you'd like to sit, just to close our practice together. Or you can sit cross-legged. And bringing your hands together now in Atmanjali Mudra. Bringing your hands to your heart center. Honoring yourself and honoring your practice. Let's take a single Om together. Taking a deep breath in. Um. My friends, I thank you for joining me today. Hopefully you feel rooted and grounded. Feel your energy flow through you freely and with love and gratitude. I thank you. Namaste. Peace. Peace, peace. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you here on Wednesday. Or just catch up on these classes whenever you want. Reuse them, share them with friends. It's completely for all of you to use whenever you want. So have a lovely day. Take care. Lots of love.